Welcome back to Football Daily for today's top 10. Usually at this time of year, the managerial merry-go-round is in full swing. So today we're looking at the managers who have received the biggest payouts after being sacked. Let's get into it. 10. Roberto Martinez We're kicking off this list on Merseyside with Roberto Martinez, who received a mega £10 million payout from Everton after being sacked in 2016. Appointed as Man United bound David Moyes' replacement in 2013, the Spaniard became the first Everton manager to go unbeaten in his first six matches with the club. At the end of his debut campaign, they had finished fifth, achieving their highest ever Premier League points tally, and Martinez was rewarded handsomely with a five-year contract and a salary of £80,000 a week. But that's where it would peak for the former Swansea and Wigan boss failing to finish in the top half in the subsequent season, and replicating that 11th place finish in 15-16 as well. So unsurprisingly, his stay on Goodison was terminated, and he immediately went after full payment of his wages for the remainder of his contract, worth around £12 million. But after being told if he'd accept a single payment he would receive £10 million, Martinez shook the hands of Everton's lawyers and was on his way. It wasn't too long before he was picked up by Belgium of all places, guiding the nation to third place at the 2018 World Cup. 9. Roberto Di Matteo Before we move on to our next section, just a quick reminder to subscribe to Football Daily and hit that notification bell to never miss one of our fantastic top 10s. Next up is a location that will appear quite a few times on this list in Stamford Bridge. Assistant manager Roberto Di Matteo was handed the top job at Chelsea following the sacking of Andre Villas-Boas in March 2012 and although he initially impressed, was out of the job by November, but continued to receive his full wages until the summer of 2014, earning £10.7 million in the process. He began by overcoming a two-goal deficit against Napoli to see Chelsea into the Champions League quarter-finals, and beat rival Spurs 5-1 in an FA Cup semi-final. Remarkably, Di Matteo would lead the Blues to both those trophies, earning himself a two-year deal at the club he featured 175 times for between 1996 and 2002. Just five months later though, he was sacked after failing to qualify for the knockouts of the Champions League. Negotiations began between the Italian and Chelsea regarding a payoff, but as no agreement was reached, the contract had to be honoured. As Di Matteo didn't return to management until October 2014, he picked up his £130,000 a week wages for the next two years. Not bad for just a few months of good work. 8. Arsene Wenger Sticking in London for number 8 is Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. The Frenchman became synonymous with the Gunners during his 22-year tenure, taking control at Highbury way back in 1996, winning three Premier Leagues and seven FA Cups. But having not won the title since 2004, the 70 year old was let go in 2018, forcing Arsenal to wire £11 million into his account. There's no hiding the impact Wenger had not just in North London, but in English football as a whole. In the process of turning his Arsenal side into the most feared team in the country, overseeing the shift towards healthier diets, and a focus on developing youth talent and bargain buys. But as time wore on after the iconic Invincible season of 0304, his methods didn't seem to resonate with newer generations as they had done with the likes of Henri and Vieira. Even three FA Cup triumphs in four years couldn't stop the fans turning on the club, forcing the board's hand into ending his contract prematurely. In total, he and his staff were paid £17.1 million, but after 22 years at the helm, maybe Wenger would have wanted one more shot at a trophy instead of that mega payoff. 7. Andre Villas-Boas And just like that, we're back at Chelsea, where part-time rally driver Andre Villas-Boas was handed his P45 in 2012, the same year as his aforementioned successor Roberto Di Matteo. Formerly Jose Mourinho's assistant, he began his own meteoric rise in 2009, making the same hop from Portugal to England as his mentor in 2011, when the Blues paid Porto over £13 million. And it cost them almost that amount again upon sacking AVB just nine months later. Villas Burst was just 33 years old when he took the job, the fourth youngest in Premier League history, where a 0 0 against Stoke was just a sign of what was to come. Pressure mounted when Chelsea dropped out of the top four, then curious team selections, including leaving Ashley Cole, Essien, and Lampard on the bench for a continental match, saw him eventually let go. A payoff of £12 million came AVB's way, but as fast as his reputation rose, it fell to pieces just as quickly. He almost doubled the amount of losses in his career at Stamford Bridge alone, while his 47% win percentage remains the lowest in his career since his first role. But AVB is having a resurgence now, having finished second in Liga with Marseille. 6. Maurizio Pochettino Yes, we're still in London for this next one, where Maurizio Pochettino's successful spell with Spurs 
ended up with a £12.5 million compensation package and seeing Jose Mourinho take his seat in the dugout. Just a sole Premier League season with Southampton was enough for Spurs to make him their Tim Sherwood replacement back in 2014. And whilst no trophies came to White Hart Lane or the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for that matter, he certainly brought joy to the white half of North London. The Argentine led them to third place in 2016 and then second the following year, with a club record 86 points, going unbeaten at home in the process. Who could forget the run to the Champions League final two just a year ago, with that Lucas Moura hat-trick against Ajax? But after previously stating he would leave if Spurs won that trophy, it appears he set the wheel in motion for a departure. And after a poor start to the ensuing campaign, Daniel Levy made the decision to sack him in November 2019, as the side were languishing in the bottom half. 5. Luis Felipe Scolari Guess what, it's back to Chelsea where we take a look at another ill-advised Abramovich appointment, and this time it's Luis Felipe Scolari. The role at Stamford Bridge was the first he'd ever had at a European club side spending most of his career in Brazil and the Middle East, although his most recent position was that of the Portugal national side. On a three-year deal, Big Phil became the first and to date only World Cup winner to manage in the Premier League, and in reality didn't have a disappointing record in England, losing just five of his 36 matches in charge. The official line was that results were deteriorating the key time in the season, meaning the club had to pay off his huge £6 million a year salary adding up to a massive £12.6 million for the remainder of his contract. Scolari, who admitted part of the reason he took the job was the money on offer, also blamed a falling out with Nicolas Anelka as the reason results went downhill. The Frenchman apparently ignored his boss's instructions to play wider in order to accommodate Didier Drogba's return. But the reality is that two wins from six late on in the season isn't good enough for any Chelsea manager. 4. Fabio Capello Finally, we're leaving England's capital, but it is still someone with a connection to the game here. But instead of his tenure with the Three Lions, Fabio Capello's massive payoff came following his time with Russia. Taking the job with Russia just five months after his acrimonious split with the FA, Capello lasted three years in Moscow before his sacking and a £13.4 million settlement. Under his stewardship, Russia qualified for the 2014 World Cup, but failed to make it out of the group stages and despite winning 17 of his 32 games at the helm, was sacked after a poor start to Euro 2016 qualification. After six games, they had just eight points, the two wins coming against Liechtenstein, as well as an awarded 3-0 victory over Montenegro after an abandonment due to crowd violence. Losing his job in July 2015, Capello reportedly received almost £30 million in severance payments. This included an £8 million sponsorship deal and almost a year of a £7 million a year salary, after going unpaid following the World Cup. Taking those away from the grand total though, and it still leaves him with over £30 million received from the Russian FA. A pretty decent retirement package. 3. Laurent Blanc Off to France next, and there's only one club that could afford to be on a list like this. Since the Qatari takeover, PSG have hired a number of managers with a pedigree, including Carlo Ancelotti and Thomas Tuchel. But it's Laurent Blanc who winds up on this list, having been paid £17 million by Le Parisien to leave the club in 2016. Blanc took over from Ancelotti in the summer of 2013 and was extremely successful, as you'd expect winning eight of a possible nine trophies in his three years in charge. Just the 2014 Coupe de France prevented the Frenchman from achieving a treble of domestic trebles, but ultimately it was his European form that cost him his job. Eliminated at the quarterfinal stages three years in a row by Chelsea, Barcelona and finally Man City. So despite signing a two-year deal months earlier worth £7 million a year, the board decided to relieve Blanc of his duties at the end of the campaign. It was an amicable split with PSG appreciating what Blanc had done for the club and thanks to his shiny new deal he received £17 million in a severance package. Not that they did much better with their next hire though, a certain Unai Emery. 2. Jose Mourinho you knew he was going to appear on this list, and here he is at number two. The reality is that Mourinho could have featured in this list three times, following an £80 million payment after leaving Chelsea in 2007. He was initially given just £8 million after his first departure from Stamford Bridge. But after Spurs offered to match his blue salary to take charge at White Hart Lane, Abramovich very quickly wired him another £10 million on the Braviso who wouldn't take another Premier League job for 12 months, which he didn't, joining Inter Milan instead. Then, second time around at Chelsea, Mourinho received another £9.5 million when he left Cobham for the final time in December 2015. But it's for his monstrous Man United payout that he lands in this spot. Almost three years to the day after his Chelsea dismissal, he was sacked at Old Trafford, costing Ed Woodward and co. £19.6 million. In fact, Mourinho has made £64 million as a result of being sacked from various jobs, 
his other parrot being in the range of £70 million after losing the Real Madrid job in 2013. Just a year on after signing a deal meant to last until 2016. We wonder how much Spurs will have to pay him if they go down the same route. 1. Antonio Conte We round off this list at Chelsea heading back to Stamford Bridge for the fifth time, where it should come as no surprise an Abramovich appointee has topped this chart. It's his hiring of Antonio Conte that cost the club he purchased back in 2004 a whopping £26.2 million when the Italian was released from his contract in 2018. Many thought the sacking was somewhat harsh after all the side had regained the Premier League title just 12 months earlier in his debut campaign in West London. 93 points was the second highest in Premier League history at the time, but there was a lot of noise following the former Juventus and Italy manager. The decision to tell Diogo Costa he wouldn't be part of his plans by text message certainly rubbed a few the wrong way. Whilst being rewarded with a higher wage but not a contract extension following his title win, raised eyebrows from outside the club. Conte went on to win the FA Cup in his second and final season with the Blues, leaving the club on a high with the fans singing his name. But he was sacked regardless and spent the next year in broad and legal battles with Chelsea, and it wasn't until the £26 million settlement was made that he took his next job. So guys, that's our 10 most expensive managerial sackings. What did you guys think of the list? How ridiculous are those Chelsea dismissals? Let us know in the comments down below. And if we missed any out as well, although I don't think we did. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye!